So, on episode two, we looked at everything that was wrong with Otto Alex's cheapest S2000. And now we're going to cut it to bits for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark. And here is a very unflattering video of me, Jamie. And this car right here was the UK's cheapest Honda S2000 that we bought from this man. Auto Alex. So if you've been following the build, we got ourselves some carbon arches, which we're going to cut up the car to fit. But first, we're going to get rid of this old stinky OEM front bumper. Because this man here convinced me to buy a new fancy one. While we wait on the suspension components and the subframe being powder coated, we need to fit our new body panels in order to know where the new dimensions of the car are going to be. And since our S2000 is going to be a race car, we're going to have different suspension geometry and of course, much wider wheels. What is equally important though, is this vehicle's cooling. In order to maintain stable temperatures on our brakes and of course our engine too, we've gone with this Voltex front bumper, which will allow us room for an oil cooler and brake ducts too. Right, Mark you convinced me to buy this thing. Yep. What do you think? It's, it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. I meant looks and stuff, but oh, let's talk about the quality. Listen, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> fine, just like everything else on the car. Exactly. Ah, it's period correct. <laughs> <laughs> let's get fitting. We mock fitted the bumper just now, and I'm sure you'll agree it looks pretty good. We'll come back to this later on in the episode, but for now. Taking off some nuts and bolts from our front bumper is the easy bit. And now, <laughs> on to the hard stuff. Yep. The carbon arches that we chose to go with just so happened to be one of the most difficult to fit on a Honda S2000. Not only do these over fenders, well, go over the fenders, we'll also have to cut quite a large chunk of the wing out in order to accommodate the new ducts that come on our over fenders. Now I can't say for sure if these ducts will actually help our car go faster, but it sure does look cool. The idea behind these ducts is to let the high pressure air that builds up round about the wheel escape down the side of the car, but neither myself or Mark are aerodynamic experts, so we'll just have to take Circuit's word for it. So with our first rough cut measured, it's time to start chopping. And since no one likes grinder noise for 3 minutes, and the fact we're both massive fans of Bad Obsession Motorsport, it's time to break out the funk. Oh, and don't worry, we hate the electric grinder too, we just couldn't find the attachment for the air driven one. While Mark makes the first cuts to our car, here's some weird S2000 facts. At the time of release, the S2000 made 240 horsepower from a 2 litre engine. This made the S2000 the highest horsepower per litre naturally aspirated production engine in the world. And despite Ferrari's claims the 458 was the first production car to have a 9000 RPM rev limit, Honda had already achieved this with the S2000 12 years beforehand. What's even more impressive about the S2000, despite it being a front engined car, the engine sits behind the front axle, giving this vehicle a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Which also makes it slightly sketchy going around corners. Now that Mark's made the first rough cut on the arch, you've probably noticed we've not cut nearly enough off to fit this thing. This first cut is just to accommodate the bump on the carbon fender, and now it will sit inside this recess, we can finally measure the rest and then cut it off. While we're here, we need to talk about the windscreen washer bottle and of course the pump as well. We're going to have to relocate this somewhere else, because when we put big sticky tyres on this thing, it's going to be in direct line of fire of any debris that we run over. It's time to crack out the rest of our tools and get the rest of this arch done and fitted. And for the first time ever on this channel, finally I get to have some time on the tools. This reciprocating saw will do the first big cut, then it's back to the grinder for the finicky stuff. Now we've got our final cut, it's time to screw the over fender onto the arch. This might look crude, and it is, but carbon fibre is very rigid and we need to make sure this thing will actually flex into place before we start adding rivnuts. 
We add small screws just to hold it in place, and assuming they're in the correct position, these are good pilot holes for the future. Happy with the placement of the arches for now, it's time to get the wheel back on and lower it down to the ground. Once back down in terra firma, I think you'll agree this thing's starting to look pretty good. Obviously we have a bit of an arch gap to fill here, but we're not sure on new wheel choice, so spacers will have to do for now. With a quick tidy up round our workspace, it's time for us to head home, and we'll get back to this tomorrow. It's JDM fairy rust mate. Yep. <laughs> Add stem brake. Right, it's day two. We're back again with the S2000. Got yeah. a bit late last night. Out to 11 I think. We went uh, back at it home. Was, uh, it was a late one. So we're on to arch number two at the front. And then number three and four, the back. <laughs> because we've already fitted the driver's side arch, we're just going to take a template from this side and then reverse it and put it on the other. This will save us some time, and because it's a race car, we don't even need to be gentle. With our template on the other side, it's time to start cutting. Oh, and this time, we've got the pneumatic grinder and plenty of new wheels. As you can see, these wheels are cutting through the panels much quicker. And it doesn't take Mark too long to cut through the first section of wing. With the final cut being made on this corner, myself and Mark thought this side would be done. But it turns out this S2000 is full of surprises. What's that? Somebody's fuel? Oh. <laughs> it's like a plant pot. There's a couple of toys in there. <laughs> That's potatoes for the potatoes Americans. <laughs> so it turns out we've done a bit of accidental weight saving. Yep. That's a good kilo of dirt. <laughs> I'm just going to weld this part of the wing back on because we've we'll kind of balanced out the carbon savings. <laughs> Definitely looks like it. Half the fuel. So after discovering Alex's secret garden, it's off with the S on the S2000 badge. The badge gets in the way of the fitment of the new fender, and on with the fender, on with the wheel again, and back down on the ground. With the second corner done, this thing is starting to look epic. What's surprising to me is just how wide it looks from the front. And we discovered yet another surprise from this car. Marcus, yes. the underside of the arch, a big surprise. It is not as bad as we thought. This is a really pleasant surprise. It means a lot less work for us. Yep. And it means that the car is actually solid. And yep. now we're moving on to the back. So yep. let's explain the process of what we're going to be doing there. So the plan is, trial fit this rear arch, roughly mount it in place, and then that will give us access to mark off the areas we need to cut off the rear quarter panel. Since the rear over fenders don't have a vent, this will be much easier to do. Both Mark and myself can just hold the fender up, put it where we want it to be, and put a couple of screws in. Now, as we were lining this fender up, we actually noticed there's a little bit of damage to the back bumper. That's the reason why this arch won't sit flush to it. Don't worry though, this is something Mark can easily fix. Unlike my butt crack. Putting the last screw in for this phase, we can move on to the next, which is pretty simple. Trace the amount of material that we need to cut off, and then just cut it off. Now Mark's deciding to cut off the inside lip beforehand, that's going to make things much easier when we go to make the final cut. So before Mark takes this last cut off the lip, let's see if anyone noticed our third surprise. Oh no. Yeah, all this corrosion has to be coming from somewhere. Rare JDM dust. Not bad. Not bad. No, we're not hiding nothing. Look at the state of that. <laughs> it's getting zoomed in on. Mmm, crusty. Crusty. 
Oh, ho, ho. It's way first in. It's worse than a subframe. <laughs> <laughs> this is what people don't tell you. How about fitting right arches to your car? You need something to actually fit them on <laughs> We're going to need some of that inner material to weld to the outer material. So, off with the rusty bit. We template the other side of the car, much like we did with the front arches, and start cutting that too. And yes, it's the same on the other side. No matter, let's just get rid of this rust and we'll deal with this another time. I know this probably looks terrible to most people when you see this amount of rust underneath your arch, but me, personally, I'm not worried because I've got a mark. He's somehow kept an EP3 from rusting for this long, so I know he's pretty good. With the arches cut and the rear fenders on, we take the axle stands out from underneath and it's time for a big reveal. With three late nights after we've both finished our jobs and a whole lot of editing, let's get this thing out in the sunlight. Well, we still have it in Scotland. When we said we'd turn an S2000 into a race car, I think this really proves we meant it. And not only is it a new journey for this cheapest S2000, it's a new journey for both myself and Mark. So if you want to follow us the rest of the way, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like the video to help us out. Right big man, the arches are on. The, the arches are on. front bumper is on. Yep, and it's secure. What do we think? I think it looks amazing. I really do. I agree. Aye, the money we've spent so far, the difference is mega. Yep. The next big difference though, is the colour. Aye, that is. So, we're actually going to do two versions. By we. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll do a reveal I think in the next video. I think that sounds good. See you then. <laughs>